Hello. In this video, we will show you how TestComplete recognizes objects on websites and in web applications, and how you can find these objects in your tests. To simulate user actions, TestComplete needs to find the window or control on screen. In this search, it does not rely on the control's position on screen because even a slight change in the application GUI or testing environment can make such coordinate-based tests flaky. Instead, TestComplete recognizes individual windows and controls by their type say a page, a panel, a link, and their properties, usually the object's name given by the application developer. For each recognized control, TestComplete provides an object that can be used in tests to interact with the control. Such object-oriented tests are more resistant to changes in your application. You can explore recognized windows and controls and their properties and methods in the object browser. For example, here is a sample application opened in a web browser, and here are its internal objects, a web page and web elements that the page contains, their properties and methods. You can select and explore an individual object of a tested application by using the object spy. You use one of these tools to point out the object on screen. The object spy will show the object's properties and methods. You can click here to locate the object in the object browser. The full name property shows the tested object's name in the object browser. This name can often be too long and complex for a human to read and use in tests. Or you may want to use another set of properties to identify a tested object, for example, the object's class name or attributes. In this case, you can take advantage of the name mapping. You can store tested objects in the name mapping repository under a custom name. And with a set of identification properties called mapping criteria, these custom or mapped names are much easier to read. The hierarchy of these map names follow the actual hierarchy of objects in the application. You can see we have a map name for a web browser, web pages, and their web elements. For each of them, the repository stores the mapping criteria. Because the map name hierarchy follows the actual hierarchy, full map names can still be too long and complex. To simplify addressing objects in tests even further, TestComplete employs aliases. Each mapped object can have one. For example, the search box of our tested web store application is mapped as text box InstaSearch and has a front page search box alias. The aliases do not follow the actual object hierarchy and can be as short and simple as possible. They also do not affect how the test engine searches for the objects in the application, only how the objects are called in tests. For simplicity reasons, using aliases is a preferable way of addressing objects in tests. That is why the name mapping shows the alias in the repository as a default. TestComplete creates aliases and uses them to address objects automatically when you record tests. During the run, when your test encounters an alias, TestComplete locates the mapped object that corresponds to that alias, and then starts searching for the actual object in your tested application, starting from the top-level mapped object downwards. As we've seen earlier, TestComplete maps objects automatically during the recording process. Nevertheless, you could do it manually as well. To do that, click here or here, point to the object on screen, and then either allow TestComplete to store the object with auto-suggested mapping settings or specify them yourself. Usually, the most convenient way is to allow TestComplete to map all needed objects automatically and then modify the generated mapping criteria manually. You can, for example, map an object by its standard or custom attributes. You can also modify criteria values. To make sure that your specific criteria identify your tested object uniquely, you can highlight the object on screen. You will see a flashing red rectangle around the object. Note that the application to which the object belongs must be running. The hierarchy of mapped names follows the actual object hierarchy, but it is possible to skip some redundant levels by engaging extended find. When this box is selected, TestComplete searches for the object not only on the current level of the hierarchy, but rather down to the very bottom of the hierarchy. By default, TestComplete tries to use extended find whenever it is possible. This may be helpful when testing web applications with a dynamic hierarchy. If for some reason a test fails to find a mapped object using the provided mapping criteria, it will report the object does not exist error. This may happen, for example, if your test application was updated and the object position in the hierarchy or properties were changed as well. To fix such an error, you'll have to update the problematic object's mapping criteria. This concludes our overview of recognizing test objects and using the name mapping. We hope that this will help you understand how to get tested objects in tests. Thank you for watching.